Judge Juan Mercan is now making access to the Trump prosecution in New York brought by Alvin Bragg. A little bit more difficult than it should be for some time here. Your document sleuths have been trying to unpack what is going on in New York because there have been a bunch of filings that have landed on Judge Mercan's desk. The government has been responding to it. There's been apparently emails back and forth, but conveniently, none of it is ending up on the docket. Huh, we can't find out what's going on there. Why is that? Well, they don't want us to see what's inside. And now Trump's team submitted a request to unseal the docket, right? We're not expecting cameras to be in this courtroom when the trial that's scheduled for just a few short weeks from now occurs. So we're going to have visual reports. Could we at least see the docket? Could we see some of the exhibits that are being submitted? Can we get access to this material? Judge Juan Mercan says no, and his reasoning is ridiculous. But this is what Donald Trump's defense said. Sending this in to the Honorable Juan Mercan. This is coming from Blanche Law. And they originally sent this filing back on March 10th. The judge just issued his ruling in response. And remember, the judge got very ornery. He was very irritated that Trump was filing motions on the public docket. We could all read them. He says, don't you file those. You should file pre-motions before you submit the actual motion. In a pre-motion, tell us what the motion is. Because he doesn't want us to see what's actually in the filing, right? The judge is trying to cover up some of the requests because the last one was a banger. They dropped that last one. So here, Trump's defense, Todd Blanche, Susan Nichols, they sent this in. Hey, Judge Mercan, we know trial's scheduled pretty soon. So we are asking you to unseal all of the pleadings, the orders, unseal all of the written communications that have involved all of this case. The court, the parties, including communications sent by letter and by email and give access to the public to all future pleadings, all orders, all written communications so that we can see them, please. Which is a point we've been making here for years now. Okay, if the evidence is so dang good that Trump's an insert insurrectionist and a criminal, as they're alleging in this case. Why can't we just see the evidence? It's not complicated. It's a government official. His team is like, okay with it, right? They have access requests from them. Post it publicly. We've had many different orders and requests like this from the Trump defense. Let everyone see it. They don't want to see it. It's like the Count of Monte Cristo. They'd rather just throw Edmund Dantes in the gulags. So Trump's team submitted this as an exhibit. They say, hey judge, if you give us permission to file this motion, this is what we're going to file. So they were very sneaky. Now this is pretty fun. So Trump Trump's defense basically was told, don't submit docket, don't submit your motions on the public docket. Submit a permission slip in a pre-motion, bizarro land, Judge Mercon, whatever. Submit a pre-motion, get permission, tell me what, a little bit about what you're going to file, and then I'll let you know. Because he didn't want the big drops to come on the docket, you know, like Michael Cohen's a liar and all the things that Trump's team is alleging. So Trump's team did that. They submitted the permission slip, and then they said in the permission slip, oh, by the way, here's the motion that we'll submit if you give us permission to submit it. So in other words, they submitted it anyway. Anyways, okay, yeah, here's our permission, stupid motion, dumb judge, but here's the actual motion we would file. So if you grant it, here it is. It's right there, convenient for you. And the whole thing shows up on the public docket so we get to see it anyways. It's nice. So the judge not very happy about that. Now he says, this is Trump's defense. All right, saying, hey judge, by the way, here would be our motion if you would allow us. We have a request to unseal all the docket pleadings, all the orders, all the communications, everything that is in the file, and here's why. Todd Blanche says, I am submitting this as an affirmation. I represent represent Trump. And I believe that this is a true and accurate copy of everything. So here's what he says. This is a motion by President Trump for public proceedings. Now, this is not actually being ruled on by the judge at the moment. It's attached as an exhibit, but the judge is going to rule on it anyways. So he says, all right, here we are, Your Honor. Now, President Trump respectfully submits this motion for unsealing and for public access to all the documents in this case, including your emails, judge, that you've been sending to us and to the government. We also want simultaneous public public access of all future pleadings, orders, and written communications. If Trump's such a guilty person, just unseal everything, right? I mean, come on. Liz Cheney, same goes to you. Why'd you have to delete anything? Just put it all on the internet. It's a public investigation, isn't it? Now, such access is required by the state and federal constitution so we can see this. It's necessary to create a record that will permit any subsequent appellate review and critically important in light of this court's rulings, right? This is President Trump. Trump is alleging prosecutorial misconduct and he's raising these issues based on on recent developments. So here's the background. Why do we want public access? Why are they trying to hide everything from us? Throughout this case, Trump's defense says, the court has communicated with the parties via emails and via letters. And those emails contain substantive rulings in those emails, but they do not appear to be on the docket. Huh? Or otherwise available to the public. I know, I've been looking for a long time for them. Or to the parties as necessary for an appellate record. The court has also permitted delayed public filing of motion papers well past the time that they're 
submitted to the court via email. In the latest example, and it's just one of them, in an email sent at 9.17 p.m. back on March 8th, Your Honor, you ruled in an email, you said, that President Trump's March 8th motion for discovery sanctions was not accepted at this time. What on earth? Judge is just ruling via email. It's like, okay, that's fine, but put it on the docket so we can see it. It's like a formal, you know, thing that happened in the court. Okay. Ordered defense counsel not to file a motion unless until this court expressly authorizes you to do so. What? So this is the Angeron saga all over again. Okay, remember Angeron said, don't make your objection. Don't you say it. Don't do it, Chris, remember? And Chris is like, judge, I'm a lawyer in court. I have to speak. I have to make an objection. Don't do it, Chris. And then he moved those cameras around because people thought he was playing footsie with his clerk, Allison. Remember that? Before he, you know, went and worked on his pecs. <laughs> So it's the same thing. This is the judge saying, don't do it, Chris. Don't file a motion unless I authorize you to file a motion. So what? We're lawyers. That's our job. And directed that nothing should be filed with the court, whether it's redacted or otherwise. Now, this is all happening in email. And the reason why the judge doesn't want this to happen, right? Don't file anything. Why? Because he doesn't want you to see what's inside of it, which is why he made them file the pre-motion. And they, you know, they're basically ignoring the pre-motion and just attaching the background motion anyways, which is amazing. Love that. So don't do anything. Don't do it, Chris. It's insane. They don't want us to see what's happening. That's what it comes down to. So they say, look, the First Amendment applies. Okay, judge, remember that. Read the Constitution. We always have to be able to see what's going on. We have a right to speak. We also have the Sixth Amendment public right to trial, saying the public trial guarantee was created for the benefit of the defense. This and other Sixth Amendment rights are for the defense. There can be little doubt that the explicit Sixth Amendment right of the accused is no less protective of a public trial than the First Amendment right of access of the press and the public, right? So through the First Amendment, the public has a right to access. Through the Sixth Amendment, the defendant has a right to have be seen. Hey, look what they're doing to me, man. The central aim of a criminal proceeding must be to try the accused fairly, unless you're Trump, then no one cares. The reason for that right is that to the framers, secret trials obviously symbolized a menace to our liberty, right? And the public trial right is provided as a necessary safeguard to attempt to employ our courts as an instrument of persecution. But were there cameras in Angeron's courtroom? No, there weren't. Were there cameras in Judge Kaplan's courtroom? No, there wasn't, which is a federal court. How about Tish's courtroom, which was Angeron? In the federal courts, there's a pretty strict prohibition on that, but why didn't the state courts allow it? How come no pretrial proceedings have been observable in the Bragg prosecution? Angeron clearly had cameras outside of his courtroom because he was posing for them every time they came in, and then he kicked them out because they don't want you to see what they're doing, and our founders warned about this. And while, of course, the vast majority of judges and jurors would strive to uphold the we can't be sure, which is why we need a public trial so that we can observe and watch it. Now, common law also says that there is a, a right of access to these materials. New York has recognized a common law right of access to court records, and they say that court papers are public records. This is Trump's defense writing. With all that case law out of the way, they say court records are public records. As a result, formal and publicly filed communications between the parties and the court are a requirement steeped in Trump's right to a public trial trial, the First Amendment right of access that belongs to the press and the public, and the related common law framework, saying at the April 4th, 2023, almost a year ago, press conference that was related to the indictment, Alvin Bragg promised the public. Alvin came out and he said, this case would be litigated in a public courtroom in downtown Manhattan. That's what Alvin said. At President Trump's arraignment on the same day, the court acknowledged that First Amendment rights are critically important, obviously. The court said that. And at the May 4th, 2023 conference, Your Honor, you, Judge Juan Mercon, you yourself called attention to a perceived obligation on the part of the DA Bragg to, quote, explain to the public what he was doing. It's good for the public to see it. But since that time, however, something strange has happened. The public, that's us, has been shielded from important communications and rulings bearing on the conduct of this case. Transparency, they are quoting Second Circuit case, is pivotal to public perception of the judiciary's legitimacy and independence. Quoting, they say, courts must impede scrutiny of the exercise of that judgment only in the rarest of circumstances. Okay, so when courts are making judgments, you do not limit the scrutiny of how those judgments are being made. We should have a microscope zoomed in on this stuff, which is what we do here. Shine a spotlight down upon it, baby. Now, this is especially so when a judicial decision accedes to the request of a coordinate branch, lest ignorance of the basis for the decision cause the public to doubt that complete independence of the courts of justice, which is peculiar 
peculiarly essential in a limited constitution, right? Courts are unique because they don't have enforceability powers like the other branches have. Congress has the power of the purse and the executive branch has, you know, the power to execute the law. So they have a lot of enforceability powers. Courts don't. They stand on their legitimacy and their credibility. And when they do what they're doing in all of these Trump prosecutions, they burn it into the wind. Here's a quote. The mere fact that the suit has been the subject of intense media coverage is not sufficient to justify the closure of the case from the public. That's in the ABC versus Stewart case. Now it's unclear if this court contemplates public filings of its email rulings or otherwise private correspondence with the parties at some later date. But even if it does, that is of no moment. Now reasoning that later transcripts, right? The fact that we published this stuff later and they were later available to the public, that doesn't satisfy anything. We want it now. Now Trump's defense continues. They say the court's March 8th email is an example of an important communication that must be public because it implicated Trump's rights under the state and federal constitutions, right? Judge, you issued a ruling, you sent it on an email from the toilet and we want it on the docket so that we can all see what the heck is going on. Now, including his right to a fair trial and his right to defend himself as well as under the law. Now, similarly, Trump's pre-motion letter in response to the court's March 8th letter, right? His pre-motion, his permission slip is a judicial document that's subject to access principles discussed herein. So we want that on the docket. Judicial records should include documents that are relevant to the performance of the judicial function. If it shows what's happening, we want to be able to scrutinize that. Any document that would reasonably have a tendency to influence the court's ruling. Now, the prosecutorial misconduct and the discovery violations, this is why the judge doesn't want us to see this, that are described in Trump's pre-motion letter and in the enclosed motion, which have come to light only recently, should not be shielded from public view or summarily and wrongfully rejected by the court without consideration, right? Don't do it, Chris. Don't say it. Don't you object. Don't you file it. Because if they do, it's going to show up. We'll all see it. Saying access, this is another case, talking about access to the report is going to play a significant role in the public's understanding. So it weighs heavily in favor of having a right to access. So if it's very necessary for the public to understand what the heck is going on, we have a propensity to get it. Now, President Trump's Sixth Amendment right and the constitutional and common law right of access held by the public and the press, Your Honor, they require that these pre-motion letters and these emails and these other orders from you be made public and be done promptly. For the foregoing reasons, Trump respectfully submits that the court you won should one, unseal and docket all the pleadings, all the orders, all the written comms that have involved the court and the parties, including the emails and the letters, and also require simultaneous public access of all future pleadings and orders and written communications, except anything that we have to redact as required by your protective order and by the law. Sincerely signed by Todd Blanche and Susan Nicholas, who are representing Trump and doing a great job. Now, here is one of the emails, right? This is an email order, and this is what they're saying is happening behind the scenes. Trump's defense attorneys are basically adding this to the public docket for us. Like, the judge is not doing it, but they're saying, this is what we're talking about. Like, this should be here. So here is from Honorable Juan Mercan. Here's the letter. Mr. Blanche, it appears you misunderstood this court's earlier order. Let's back it up. Judge Juan Mercan, please see attached. We will communicate with the people regarding redactions prior to filing. This is an email from Todd Blanche to the Honorable Judge, copying a bunch of other people, Susan Eccles and so on. It says, Dear Judge, please see attached. We will communicate with the people regarding redactions prior to the filing. Respectfully submitted, Blanche, right? So here's the document. It's a discovery sanctions motion. Hey, Judge, take a look. This is coming down the pike. Get ready for it. We're going to talk to the people about redacting it. Okay, we can't wait to drop this on the docket because we're going to take it and read through it and we're going to indulge. And it's going to be very good because Alvin Bragg is, you know, committing sanctionable conduct. Here is what the judge says in response. So you're getting ready to go and file that. It says, Mr. Blanche, it appears you misunderstood this court's earlier order. Todd, Blanche, rah, it says the judge. You've attached, judge, typo, taking points off for that, what you refer to as a pre-motion letter, but you also attach an affirmation, a notice of a motion, and a 48-page motion. Further, you indicate that you will communicate with the people regarding redactions prior to filing. He says your pre-motion letter is accepted. If the people wish to respond, they will be given until Monday to do so. I will then decide whether to permit you to file a motion. What? To be crystal clear, so there is no confusion. Your motion is not accepted at this time, and you may not file a motion unless until this court expressly authorizes you to do so. Therefore, nothing should be filed with the court, redacted or otherwise. JMM Judge. Okay, so like this is just standard motion practice.
practice, right? Hey, Your Honor, we have this motion that we're about to blast the government with, discovery sanctions. We're asking for sanctions because they did something that is sanctionable. They committed misconduct. And we're about to hit them in the head with that, legally. And the judge says, no, you're not. Don't you even dare file it. So Alvin, now that you know what their motion is, let me know what your response is. And then I'll tell you whether you're filing your motion or not. And then guess what? This whole thing never ends up on the docket. Isn't that amazing? So nobody gets to read and see the actual motion for sanctions for Alvin Bragg because the judge is being very clever. Don't file anything with the court. I'll let you know, blah, blah, blah. And this email doesn't go on the docket. That's a ruling, right? The judge said, nope, uh, holding this. This is like an order, but he doesn't want us to see what's happening. Okay, so with all that being said, now here's what the judge says. It's a pathetic justification for not giving us the public access to all of this material. These emails is back and forth. We want to see it. Now, here is what the judge says. One, he says, all right, Trump moves this court to one, unseal everything so we can see it and then require the future unsealing of everything else. Now, as an initial matter, Juan says, this court notes that Trump's second request acknowledges that there are instances required by the protective order, as well as various statutes that prohibit simultaneous public access to quote, all future pleadings, orders, and written communications. Now, defendant's first request is less clear. So to avoid confusion, this is the second time Trump is saying, can you just make it public, please? Since this is nationally important case. To avoid confusion, the court denies Trump's motion to the extent that it seeks to unseal all or any information that is subject to our protective order or any other sealing required by law, which is not what Trump was saying at all, right? Like that's red herring there. You're missing the point. They actually put that in their motion, like subject to the protective order, unseal everything else. Was that email something that was subject to the protective order? That was just a conversation about a motion for sanctions. Why would that be something that needs to be sealed? Why does any of this need to be sealed? Why is there a protective order at all other than witness safety, right? Now, as to the heart of the defendant's request for public proceedings, so the judge gets rid of this. I'm denying anything that's already subject to the protective order. You know, nobody was even asking about that. So as to the heart of the request, which is about public proceedings, that the public no longer be shielded from important communications and rulings, which is what is absolutely happening. It is this court's understanding that everything that is normally maintained in a court file is currently contained in the public file. No, it's not. So to repeat, as far as this court is aware, the public is not being shielded from anything normally maintained in the public court file. I think that's probably true, but the problem is, is that they don't maintain anything in the public court file. So like I can go to the New York court website and I did it today just to double check before this segment and see case activity. I can see when the trial date's scheduled. You see a regular, you know, back end. But if you click the motions button, there are no motions in there. There's nothing to download, nothing in there at all. So this actually might be true. Everything that's normally maintained in the court file is currently there, right? It's all normal. We don't normally post a bunch of stuff. Maybe Maybe in the online docket. Maybe that's true. He says, in fact, look at this. We are so transparent. In other words, he's saying we are maintaining everything we already maintain. Now, the thing he's leaving off is that what they already maintain is nothing, zero, which presumably he knows. So we can't access any of that stuff. Now, he says, in fact, the unified court system has taken up the task of posting the substantive pleadings, the decisions and orders on the newyorkcourts.gov website, a step as far as this court is aware, which appears to be unique for a criminal case in the New York Supreme Court. So we're actually doing a better job of giving you more information that you would otherwise get. Now, of course, court proceedings in this matter have been open to the press and public alike since its inception. So you can go in there, right? We're going to see if inner city press, Matthew Russell Lee and those guys go in there and live tweet this stuff or whatever happens, but it's not going to be live streamed as far as we know. As far as the court's aware, the public's not being shielded from anything not normally maintained in the public court file. Nothing! And we've done so much for the peasants out there who who just care about what's happening in their country that we put like 12 documents up on the public docket. No transparency at all. And then gaslights everybody and is filing. What's wrong with you idiots? Plenty there, literally nothing, okay? So to the extent that Trump believes that there are communications with the court that are necessary to preserve his right to a public trial, as well as his first amendment right of access that belongs to every individual in the general public, that's us, that's our right, right? We want to get access to that. That. And this judge is gaslighting us. He's lying to us. It's all available. Just go look it up. We just did. There's nothing there. He's certainly free to attach those communications to each and any relevant submission that he intends to make. So just like Todd Blanche just did, he can attach his emails to all the subsequent filings and drop them on the docket that way. So the defense attorney can now do the judge's work for him and put his own cover up attempts on the docket. And of course, he's subject to do that according to not limited to our protective order. In fact, the defense has already done so, right? So in other words, they're already attaching all their stuff behind the pre-motion. The judge is like, I tried
tried to get you to stop doing that with the pre-motion, but you outsmarted me by attaching it to the pre-motion and filing it anyways. So you've already done that. So the judge is like, you're very good at doing that. So why don't you just keep doing that? You've already done it in the instant motion where you attached my email to the back of this one. And you did it again in the motion to vacate the order on the filing of motions. You attached another email communication with the court. So clearly you, Trump team, you are already making those communications part of the docket yourself. So I don't need to do it because you've already done it. Thanks. Now to be clear, says the judge, all motions, decisions, and pleadings normally maintained in this court's public file are in the public file. Again, there's nothing in there, right? We're looking at it. So this answer is zero. There is zero there. Thanks judge. To the extent that the defense believes that anything normally maintained that is not subject to the order, he should identify the document and to the people, all of them, everyone. The court will consider any objections and rule on the matter. Trump has indicated there are multiple rulings that have been shielded from the public. However, in his memo and affirmation, he only talks about the March 8th email. Oh, so he didn't tell us what other ones. So that email noted that the defense had an apparent misunderstanding of one of the orders. The purpose of the email was to ensure that the defendant did not violate the order. The court does not consider the email to be a decision in order because it, all it did is just reiterated the parties of an already issued order. Okay, so I didn't have to disclose that because we've already had it disclosed in the prior order. The court has considered the case law submitted by the defendant and finds much of it to be either inapplicable to the instant matter or contains legal authority which this court has been faithfully following. For example, in this case, involved court TV and a fight against an absolute ban on TV trials. And so that's not irrelevant here. New York's absolute ban on televised trials, right? So court TV is fighting against the absolute ban. So apparently we're not going to be watching this. So they say that's not an issue here because we're talking about court filings, not TV broadcasts, right? So that pertains to all motions. And so it doesn't matter here. Signed by Judge Juan Mercan, okay? Telling us that everything is publicly available. We're just all are just too stupid. We have enough. That's what we've got in New York. York, and their star witness as this case is unfolding is this guy, Michael Cohen, who is a convicted perjurer for lying to Congress, says that Donald Trump should be very worried about him. And Alvin Bragg is going to bring this guy and put him on the stand. Those are all questions that I'm pretty sure that the Manhattan District Attorney prosecutors would prefer that I not get into. So I would definitely like to kick that one off to Christie. But if I can say something about what she just said, which is accurate, the Manhattan District Attorney asked for these records records from the Southern District of New York over one year ago. And what they received from the Southern District of New York, they turned over to the prosecutors. So I understand why Judge Mershon acted the way that he did as it related to Todd Blanche. And it was rightfully so. Another issue is if you notice what Todd Blanche and the entire Trump team are so persistent at is trying to attack me, my credibility, to try to figure out a way how to impugn, again, my reputation for the sole purpose of either delaying this trial. You're a liar, dude. You've impugned your own reputation, okay? A federal judge just said that you, in your request to terminate your probation early, lied again. We just don't know where it happened, whether it was when you were taking your plea deal when you lied to that judge, or whether it was a new lie when you were in Letitia James's courtroom. So either way, you lied. No one's wrecking your reputation other than yourself. Further, or having it knocked off the calendar altogether, which is just, you know, wishful thinking. Well, you're not going to give us a preview of your testimony. You do know what this trial is about. So let me ask you something different. I mean, you said, as you just alluded to, the judge last week sure. basically rejected Trump's motion seeking to bar your testimony from the upcoming trial. They tried to do that. What should Trump fear most about April 15th? I mean, this trial date is set. What should he be worried about? Yeah, this is that little sound bite, you know, for all those people at home who just want a little bit more. I'm scared to death of Trump. You know, the fear prawn that's out there that they try to shove down everyone's gullet from MSNBC. He should be worried about what? me. He should be worried about what? the Manhattan district. You're going to lie again? In another trial? The district attorney of New York prosecutors. He should be worried about the documentary evidence. He should be worried about all of the witnesses that are going to be coming in to that trial simply because, as others have also appropriately put it, this is a very simple case. This is a case based upon documentary evidence and corroborating testimony. You know, these documents don't lie and they paint a very specific picture, one which, of course, does not nor to the benefit of Donald Trump. All right, so that's going to be their star no, witness those. who is out there and it is Michael Cohen who you know we can just see is going to be a disaster because the guy just lies non-stop now Alina Abba is out of course she's talking about the New York cases and very happy about a major victory that occurred yesterday when Trump who should have wrote the book called the art of the bond created the pretty good deal with the bond companies or the will
will be creating a pretty good deal with the bond companies after his bond was reduced from 464 million down to 175 million still has to pay it but it was a big victory and a big win for the Trump defense team and Alina Abba was involved in that this is Alina what happened today was that Letitia had to eat every single tweet she has eat posted it. since the day the eat twisted it, order from Judge and Gorin came out with the ridiculous number with the disgusting injustice on the American people not just Donald Trump and I would love to see what she tweeted today because she was having fun posting the interest on a man who has done nothing wrong and a family who has done nothing wrong every single day and then the appellate division came in and said sorry due process still exists in America you still get a right to keep your assets until we get to review what all these lawyers are saying was wrong 11 weeks I have never seen something Jesse like I saw in that courtroom it was a travesty on the justice system and I am so proud of the appellate division for giving us the opportunity. They didn't reverse the case, but they will when they see what we saw. That's right. It was a disgrace. And today there was a little bit of faith in the American system that I've lost over the past few years. I'll be honest with you. Do you think Tish James and Judge Ergeron, do they feel Ariola. ashamed, a little embarrassed? Have they felt, I don't know, maybe they overreached a little bit no, after this lunatics. decision? No, no. Well, that lunatics. would mean that they have a moral compass or yeah. a conscience. And I don't feel that that exists. Yeah, clearly. People that go on TV, censor Donald Trump, shut him off when he's speaking, want to act like he's about to go broke, want to act like he's poor and that's why he couldn't get a bond that no private company has ever been asked to get with no cash equivalents other than cash, marketable securities. People that get excited for that, they don't have a conscience, Jesse. But you know, I hope she took a little piece of humble pie today because that's what was served to her. Just yeah, a little. Take that but we'll pie, be serving a lot more it, of that Tish. in the next couple years. All right, so that was Alina Hubba in the house. And of course, big victory on getting that bond reduced, more victories to come. So we're watching this, you know, partisan onslaught, multiple criminal trials, but they're all weak. They're all terrible cases. Michael Cohen is going to be their star witness, who is a convicted perjurer who probably lied again when he was in Tish's courtroom. So they're bringing him back out for the Alvin Bragg case. And of course, we're going to be here continuing to cover this, my friends. And so we're grateful to have you here. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for subscribing and liking this video wherever it is you're watching it. We'd love it if you'd invite a friend or family member to come over here and join us and say, look at what they're doing in these cases. We're covering all the criminal cases, the civil prosecutions, the Supreme Court oral arguments, anything related to Trump 2024. We got to cover it here. So thanks for joining us. Thanks for checking out some of the links down in the description below, including our homepage, robertgovea.com, where you can grab the PDFs that we went through here today. And you can sign up for our daily newsletter. That way you get our segments translated, delivered to your inbox, and you can forward those emails to everyone you've ever met or known in your entire life. And they'll love you for it. They're like, oh, another email. I love it. Perfect. And come and join us on Locals, watchingthewatchers.locals.com. We have a great members only community there. We do streams in the morning, streams on Saturday, and after parties after the lives. We'd love to have you. So come say hello, watchingthewatchers.locals.com. And we'll see you back here on the next one. Mm -hmm.